Hello there, Michael Neff here with Gears Golf, and uh, today we're going to do a short video on Clubhead Path. It's one in a series of videos that I'm going to do that are going to go through and define uh, how we measure things, and I'll try to do my best to um, add a few other tidbits to kind of help you know how to move that. We've had several of you ask, um, you know, how, how, to, how do these things measure and how do you change things, and um, so we've had some some requests for this. Um, so Clubhead Path is basically, uh, we measure it at touch. Um, and you'll see that at this point, this is Curtis Thompson. He's a PGA Tour player. He plays mostly on the web.com tour and his sister is Lexi. He has a really, really good golf swing. And um, I, I really like this golf swing. It's a little Sergio-esque, a little bit on the downswing. This thing like, is kind of a fun golf swing to watch. But you see the club kind of comes relatively flat um, swing and then it really kind of lays down. And then he just turns the quarter hard. Hips and shoulders get really open uh, to square up the path and a um, ton of club head speed. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a really nice golf swing. And we'll get into more of some of this is a pretty good one to study here because there's a lot of things that he does that are that are pretty unique and I think pretty cool. Um, but uh, we basically define club head path at touch. So when we find the golf ball, we insert a frame in front of the on on the front of the ball, and um, we know where the club head is, and we know where the front of the ball is, and that's why we get such accurate face mapping, and that's why we're able to tell, you know, touch and center. In this case, he hit this one pretty center cut, but. Um, Clubhead path is, it's the direction of the clubhead at touch, and it's in relation to the target. Um, if I were to scroll, um, some people get a little bit confused here. So I'm going to basically, this is kind of a cool feature of gears. We basically have a, like a real time D plane here. So as I'm kind of, as I'm kind of scrolling it through here, you can see there's the club face and here's the club path. And the difference between those is spin loft. We'll get to that in a different video, but um, you can see that as I'm scrolling the avatar here or the swing. I can take this all the way to zero angle of attack here, and if I look from above, I can see the path. Okay, so the path at zero angle of attack or low point is 3.75 degrees inside to out. TrackMan refers to this as swing direction. Flight Scope refers to this as horizontal swing plane and um, we allow you to basically find out what that number is wherever you want it to be so at low point or at ang if the angle of attack is more down in this case the swing path is 12 degrees inside to out at this point and if you look face on you can see the angle of attack is roughly nine degrees down um, this is kind of helpful to know if you have a player that's struggling with swing path or angle of attack issues um, you can also see here that we draw a from the center of the club face. So we're, we're, um, we're when we calibrate the golf club, we put the calibration jig right over the center, uh, uh, right over the center of the face, a projected line from the center of gravity to the front of the face, and then basically we know where the front of the ball is. And but during the swing, the whole swing, we're tracing this uh, swing path. And you'll see that in Curtis's case, he's got a pretty wide back swing. Pretty sh it narrows out coming in, very oval shaped here, and you'll see that um, uh, you know Sergio even has kind of a bigger one here. Um, but um, what's kind of an interesting thing here is, as you see, as it kind of gets to this part of the swing, he's got like a ton of lag here. But you'll see that the arc really widens out here. You know, this is how he basically gets out of this really. Um, pinched angle between his left arm and the club and the club really gets starts to get wide and shallows out here it starts to kind of go back on its way up to um, to not be so draggy um, but um, you'll see here that uh, yeah it impact the um, the uh, club path uh, if you look from above is basically zero and that's in relation to the target We'll go into more details on how you change this, but 
Um, there's a lot of different ways to change club head path um, and too many to describe in this video. Uh, if you were to just simply move the ball back in the player's stance and you're going to assume something though, you'll assume that he can make the same exact golf swing with the ball right there, which to me is not likely because they'll react to the ball differently if you move it back. But on the same exact golf swing, let's say he was able to repeat the same golf swing um, and the ball was put back here in his stance, then his path would be 6.3 degrees inside to out. And if we move the ball forward in his stance, we would see that the path would be more outside to in. What we do know is that the more you put the ball forward, the more that you hit up on the ball, the path will skew to the left. The more you hit down on the ball, the more the path will skew to the right. And this is a very good tool to be able to visualize and show your students what happens and why you're trying to do what you're trying to do. Um, hand path, wrist relationships, shoulder alignment, aim alignment, all has to do, it's all integrated into the club head path and shaping the club head path. I have yet to see the same exact same club head path ever. So we, we really do see a variety of different movements. There's a lot of uh, tour players that have similar paths. We've measured about 120 of them, but nobody has the same exact um, same club head path. Um, but um, there are some similarities. And one, one thing I'll kind of just throw this in here. Most tour players, uh, their club head path is swinging to the right of where their shoulders are. Now this is a projected angle. This is him at impact. You can't see behind here. It's roughly 15 degrees. So if I took a line between both the center of his shoulders and I drew a line through them like this. So if I look face on and I basically just, you know, stick a, a line or put a stick right through his jolt shoulder joints. And then I look from above, you'll see that the shoulders are aiming to the left, roughly 15 degrees. Let's see, it's uh, seven degrees there. That's about 16 degrees, so it's being hidden a little bit by that one bubble. Now let's actually give you an exact number here. Oh, where's impact? There we go. 13.85 uh, degrees open. So his shoulders are roughly 14 degrees open, and the club head path is basically zero. So he's swinging well to the right of where his shoulders are. And at some level or another, most tour players swing in to out of where their shoulders are aiming at impact. Um, Ricky Fowler has kind of a unique uh, move. Um, and it's kind of one of the most unique that I've actually seen. So let's actually bring that one up here really quick and let's study that. Um, Ricky with a driver. And again, it's going to be different numbers with driver versus irons. So here's Ricky Fowler here on the left. And you'll see that, you know, at impact, you know, his swing path is, what, 1.7 degrees inside to out, and his shoulders are basically zero. So even Ricky Fowler, who, you know, if you look at Curtis, his shoulders are roughly, you know, 14 degrees more open at impact. And Ricky Fowler gets pretty far ahead of it. Even Ricky Fowler's shoulders are swinging, are to the left of his club head path. So... That's maybe an example of somebody that's like um, maybe the opposite of somebody like Curtis Thompson. Um, but I've measured like 120 tour players, and this is like um, something that I pretty much see um, it, it ever, in, in everyone, um, that the shoulders are aiming left at impact of where the club head is and the better players. So that's a cool feature of gears that, or a little tidbit that you might want to you know, add to your repertoire. But anyways, uh, hopefully that answers some of your questions. We'll get more into angle of attack and how that affects club head path. Um, the angle of attack is and is basically and the club path are the same thing. They're they're creating the same uh, vector there. They one of them's hitting as one cannot move without the other. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, they are inseparably connected, much like the face angle is and the loft of the club. When you move one, the other moves. So they, they work hand in hand. One cannot move without the other. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, if you have any questions about this or if you'd like to get some more in-depth uh, information, please feel free to, to call me or text me or 
uh, message, messenger me and we'll, uh, we'll answer your questions the best we can. Thanks a lot.